Hey there, thanks for joining me. I got a boker in, and it's a nice little knife, so I want to show it to you. I got a uh, copperhead and beer barrel oak. So this is one of the traditional slip joint knives that comes out of the Zoligan manufacturer. Uh, and what they've done is they've found old German beer barrels and repurposed them using them for the covers. So it's a really cool idea and they're really nice looking knives. There's several other videos on these knives on YouTube. If you want to see a really nice beer barrel congress, visit Joe at Messer HQ. Uh, if you'd like to see a Trapper and a Whittler, you can see that at Warthog's channel. And uh, Jersey Knife Guy has a nice beer barrel canoe if you want to take a look at that. So check out those channels and check out those videos uh, if you like these beer barrel models. So I did get the Copperhead and it came like this. Uh, strangely, the premium knives with Zoligen come in less than premium packaging. <laughs> Don't ask me why. And I have had this out already. This is a kind of a unboxing recreation. <laughs> when I get one of these in the mail, I, I can't wait to make a video. I just tear it open like a little kid getting a Hot Wheels car or something. Okay, so the first thing you can see here are these really interesting beer barrel oak handles. And uh, they are burnt. I want to talk about that in a minute. Uh, I want to talk about the beer barrel uh, wood and where it comes from. But first of all, uh, let's just talk about copperheads, the copperhead pattern for a second. So a copperhead has this raised or enlarged bolster at one end to come up and hide or cover those raw ends, uh, the corners of the knife blades. So they don't rub a hole in your pocket or feel rough in your hand. Uh, you know, it's a lot like a canoe, but it's just on one end. And uh, apparently this has a common joint, you know, which is the strongest type of joint in the open position. Uh, let me show you one. Uh, this is a um, tailgate trapper from Rough Rider. It's actually a great little knife. And you can see here, this is a common joint where the corners of the blade stick up like that. And then you can also have um, partially sunken joints. So this is another boker. It's like a little barlow with a short bolster, I guess. But you can see that those blade corners are, are mostly hidden down in there, just peek up a little bit. Then you can have construction that is uh, fully sunken, sunken joints, like this boker gentleman's club, where you get absolutely nothing sticking up there. Um, this is supposed to be uh, the weakest construction, I guess weaker than a common joint, uh, you know, so for a working knife you'd want probably the common joint over the sunken joint. But the copperhead takes kind of care of that problem of those corners sticking up by just bringing the bolster up. It reminds a lot of people of, or reminded somebody, <laughs> of a, a snake head, copperhead. So that's where you get that. I don't know a lot about the history of this pattern. I did try to research it and I didn't come up with much. I came up with that they have been around since at least the early 1900s. Uh, this pattern was uh, available from Case Knives pre-1915. This is just secondhand information off the internet. But I did find out that Boker introduced their copperhead pattern uh, really not that long ago in the scheme of things, in 1974. And I get that information from this most excellent book, Boker, Two Centuries and Two Countries Representing One Name and Cutlery Excellence by Neil Punchard and Ricky Ray. Uh, this is a great book. If you're a Boker fan, collect Bokers, or want to collect Bokers, you need to go get this book. I'm telling you, it will save you a lot of time. It'll save you money, and it'll keep you from making costly mistakes. Plus, it's just really entertaining. I'm just really impressed with this book. I'll put a link again where you can get your own copy if you'd like to. But from the book, I learned that Boker brought that out in 1974, and it was for Boker, it was kind of based on their American Folding Hunter model, the 2020, which they introduced in 1954. So you can see the similarities. Both of them have that copperhead bolster. So let's take a good look at the knife. It is uh, three and three quarters inches long in the closed position. It's going to have two blades. It's a two layer knife. The blades are two and three quarter inches long. Uh, again, 
Here you can see those charred oak handles made from old German beer barrels. Uh, they're held in place here with spun pins. We've got a uh, very well placed nickel silver badge there that reads Soligen. So this is their version before 2020. Kind of a satin finished nickel silver uh, bolster and cap. They are lined. Brass liners. The construction of the knife is really nice. I'm very happy with it. Pretty tight across the back here. There is just, you know, maybe like a small gap here, but as far as the quality control, it's really excellent. And those handles are really fitted on there well. I mean, given that they're made out of an old beer barrel, <laughs> they did a great job. Good spring termination, good blade centering. And you can see the thickness of those covers. It's just very nice. No complaints at all. So look at the blades. The first one here on the front is a uh, drop point blade. No etch, no tang stamps. It's got a very sharp edge. Pretty good point, pretty good tip. A little bit rounded, but Really no complaints there. There's no blade play. Uh, no half stop. Good action, good spring action. Nice and snappy. Here's the second blade, or the main blade, I don't know which. I guess it would be the main since it's got the etch. But it's a clip point. You can see it's got a long nail pull. The other one had a crescent. Uh, this one does have the reverse frost etch on it. Uh, I think this was the first run of Boker's Beer Barrel series with the reverse uh, etch. And uh, you can also find them with just this tree brand and black lettering across there. Kind of an old-fashioned uh, logo of theirs. But I really like that reverse etch. I think it's just really classy looking. So I hunted around till I could find one that uh, was still new, but from that run. It also is uh, just razor sharp. Pretty good point. And the tank stamp is H. Boker, second line and Co, third line Zoligan, with the tree symbol next to it. And nothing on the reverse. No half stop on that one either. Just really nice action. So I'd like to talk about these beer barrel wood covers for a moment because they really intrigued me. I wondered, you know, did Boker find and acquire some old antique barrels from a certain time ago and when those are gone, they're gone, or is it something else? So I started to look into it and the first thing I found was a thread on a knife forum discussing these knives and someone said they'd actually contacted Boker and asked if they could tell them did they come from a particular brewery or breweries. And Boker came back and said no, uh, they sourced them from a variety of places. So Boker's not really committing to where they came from or their age, and so that got me even more curious, and I started Googling around, and I found out that there's actually a company by the name of Schmidt in Munich, Germany, that still makes about a thousand oak beer barrels every year uh, for the beer industry there. And they sell these bar uh, barrels to breweries around Oktoberfest in particular, you know, so people can be served beer in a, the traditional manner because they're still drinking beer out of charred oak barrels over there. <laughs> it's so cool. So not a limited, uh, scarce antique, perhaps, but anyway, a great idea. What could be more Teutonic than a German knife with uh, German beer barrel handles? And speaking of the charred wood, I wondered at first if Boker did this, you know, maybe like they make the cover and then they flamed it, charred it like they often um, burn stag, a piece of stag or something. But then I found a video of a Boker employee taking apart one of the beer barrels in their factory and I've grabbed some screenshots and you can clearly see in one of them that the inside of these barrels are charred, much like whiskey barrels. 
So I think what Boker has done here is they've just carefully given us a piece that has uh, some of that inside charring on it, which is really, really nice. So perhaps the bigger news is this. I got a catalog the other day from Smoky Mountain Knife Works, and on the cover it says, Discontinued Boker Pocket Knives. Attention collectors, many traditional Boker pocket knives will no longer be manufactured at the factory in Zoligen, Germany. We have a limited number of the German-made pocket knives still in stock, so this will be your last chance to purchase a legend. And then they picture on the cover here a copperhead, a stockman, and a trapper. Uh, so that got me wondering what's going on, and I went to the German Boker website and the U.S. Boker website, and it appears to me that the traditional pattern slip joint knives that are still being made in Zoligan are the new high-end single blade versions. You know, they have a single blade stockman. I don't know how you could call it a stockman if it just has one blade, but they have a single blade trapper or a slimline trapper. And they, they may no longer be making these multi-blade traditional patterns, at least these three, and I'm thinking maybe also the canoe. Now what they are still selling is their traditional series or traditional line and um, those are what are called the hybrid knives that just say Germany on them. So the badge here instead of saying Zoligan will say Germany and it won't say Zoligan anywhere on the knife. It's assumed that what's going on there, Boker's very tight-lipped about it, but it's assumed that maybe some or all the parts are made there in Germany, shipped to another country where labor costs are lower, perhaps China where the knives are assembled and finished. So they're not completely made in Zoligan. And uh, it looks like that some of these multi-blade traditional patterns are going to be discontinued or have been discontinued in Zoligan. Anyway, I kind of hope that's not true, um, but I think that it is. If you have any information on that, please let me know. And uh, so this has been a look at a Boker Copperhead in beer barrel oak handles from Germany. I appreciate you watching and have fun collecting. <laughs>